and you're still watching the daily debate and the year 2011 was expected to be the year of economic development or at least economic stability especially after the world has suffered after the global economic crisis in the past couple of years but then came the uprisings in the Middle East and that has caused the oil prices to skyrocket and then came the earthquake and tsunami in Japan that had also major repercussions on the global economy and joining us to further analyze the situation is Professor Dr. Gunter Lang. He's a professor at the Department of Economics, Faculty of Management and Technology at the German University in Cairo. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor Lang. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. First of all, we'd like to analyze and assess at the, at the same time the uh, results of the first quarter of the year 2011 uh, with regards to the global economic recovery if there was recovery at the first place. Yeah, actually the year, the year 2011 started pretty well. Yes, the uh, International Monetary Fund uh, in January, they increased their forecast for the growth rate of the world GDP from uh, around 4 to 4.5% 4 and everything looked pretty well, yes. Uh, so that is the forecast was that in the second quarter of 2011 or so, we will reach the output at the level we had before uh, the financial crisis in 2008. As for the United States, uh, they have even reached that level. For Western Europe and for Japan, okay, we need a few, or we needed a few more quarters, but then things changed dramatically, hmm. as you mentioned. Absolutely, the effects will be negative. So how does that affect your expectations for the second quarter of the year? Okay, let's do some, some mathematics. According to our models, uh, we, de uh, we developed in economics, yes, our, our estimate is that each $10 increase in the barrel of oil will decrease uh, the global growth rate by about 0.2 percent, 0.2 percent. Mm. So that is since, um, especially since the events heated up in Libya, we had an increase of the oil price of around $25. So that means according to our estimates that will decrease the growth rate by uh, 0.5 percent. So they are down to 4%. Okay, and now we have the Japanese earthquake. This again will have a negative effect. The damage is around 6% of the Japanese GDP. Hmm. Okay, it's a one-time event. Uh, the Japanese, uh, Japan contributes about 10% to the world GDP. Now let us, um, let us assume that they, it will take three years to, to cover the losses. The, the damages from the earthquake and the, and the tsunami, then this again will reduce the world GDP growth rate by 0.2, 0.3%. So that is, we are down to 3.7, 3.6, maybe even 3.5. Hmm. And that sounds pretty well, but it isn't pretty well. It means that global unemployment will increase. It means that real wage level for the employees will at the best stagnate. And how different are the effects of uh, what is going on in the Middle East and the uprisings we've seen and the, the turmoil we're seeing so far and the earthquake and tsunami in Japan? How different do they affect the global economy in general? Okay, um, on a general basis, the effect of, uh, of the oil price increase is much stronger uh, than the effect of the earthquake. Mm. Uh, that is in absolute terms on the world GDP, so that is the, uh, the Japanese effect will be about negative 0.2 percent. Mm -hmm. The oil price increase will be around negative 0.5 percent. Uh, that is one thing. The second thing is, of course, that the earthquake, uh, yes, close to Japan, will have its impact mainly on the Japanese economy, mm -hmm. whereas the increasing oil price, that would, will hurt more or less every, everyone. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are also winners as usual, of the situation, some firms, maybe even some countries. Mm. But the big majority, also Egypt, for example, and Germany, definitely, will be among the losers. Other oil producing countries, you mean, could be winners? There could be winners, yes, uh, especially the firms working in the countries, maybe the governments. Mm. Let's have a look at the Gulf states. They may benefit to some degree, but not everyone there uh, will, uh, will benefit. Mm. Uh, the Japanese government has released a figure about the costs of the earthquake and tsunami so far, and that has been 307 billion US dollars so far. How mm. do you see this figure? 
Okay, uh, this figure is a, is, is a big one. It would make the, the disaster from the uh, tsunami the most expensive calamities we ever had here in Japan. It by far outnumbers the earthquake of Kobe a few, a few years ago. Yes, and it's, it's among the big, big negative effects. Uh, perhaps the final number will be even larger. It, 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 uh, it, it depends. And it's around 6% of the Japanese GDP. Um, okay, we have to compare it not with the GDP. Uh, it's, the, it's a damage of the capital stock, and the capital stock is larger than the GDP. The capital stock of Japan is around the fourfold of the GDP. Uh, so, uh, uh, but still, the number is, is large. And, uh, and the people there, especially in Japan, they will suffer and uh, the whole economy will suffer for, for years. Hmm. But do you think people in developing nations would be suffering um, like those who um, live in developed nations or they have different uh, sufferings? Uh, in developing economies, okay. Um, yeah, developing economies are to some degree they, show, they, they showed a very robust growth, mm -hmm. over, especially over 2009 and, uh, and uh, to some degree also in 2010. Maybe also Egypt was, was a good yeah. example. Yes, Egypt uh, showed a, a, a stunningly good performance of the economy till 2009. Mm -hmm. Now things don't look that good. Mm -hmm. And the main problem of many developing economies is that they are, um, uh, that they urgently need capital imports. Mm -hmm. The capital stock is so low, and uh, developing economies need a, a high growth rate of the capital stock to catch up in terms of the income per, per capita. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means that uh, because now investors are getting more risk averse because of all these ev ev events, maybe even more because of the, of, of, of the unrest, mm -hmm. they do not, yes, they are aware they could lose everything. And now they, they want to have a higher premium in what they are doing. And that will, will hurt the developing economies even more. Okay, the growth rate in the develop, developing economies are still higher than in the developed world, by far. That is true. However, also the population growth here is higher. Again, let's have a look at Egypt. Uh, the, the workforce in Egypt is growing by around 4% per year. That is huge. 4% per year. That is more than 1 million persons each year um, pressing into the, into the labor market. And uh, yes, that, that's a, a really big number. So that is, you need at least a 4% growth rate to have a constant real income. And only what is on top of that will increase the income uh, and per, per person. How much of that will be met? <laughs> That's a good, difficult question. <laughs> um, I think that uh, the growth rate in, uh, in Egypt in the year 2010, because also of the special events here, they uh, will perhaps not reach the 4%. Mm. Um, the, it's very difficult now to raise, to, raise, uh, uh, to raise capital. You can see that the risk, risk premium for uh, insurance against government default and um, we can see now that the Egyptian government is not able to sell any bonds on the international area. Uh, and even the domestic investors are hesitant. They are very hesitant. And they ask for a high premium. And you can observe the same thing everywhere. Let's go to Libya. Even if the conflict there would end today evening, let's hope for that. Let's hope for the people. Yeah? Then, of course, investors will return to Libya. They, will, they, will, they are interested in the oil, they are interested in the resource of the country, they are willing to invest there. Let's, let's see the positive way. However, in contrast to the situation half a year before, they are aware that it's dangerous, that they can lose everything, and they will now demand a higher, a higher margin for what they are doing. And that will make uh, the development of new oil fields the, and the exploitation of the oil fields more expensive. So where we can see ev everywhere we have negative impacts. Investors today, yes, prefer investments into gold, precious metals. Yeah, maybe oil, but not in the sense of oil fields. But yeah, you buy some, some barrels uh, on the future uh, exchange. Uh, maybe they buy real estate, hmm. but they don't invest or, okay, they invest, but they don't e invest to the degree we would need it into productive hmm. uh, things.